what we're doing today is installing a temperature gauge on an outboard motor, in my case a Yamaha 150. We're going to use a Faria Marine head temp kit, part number 13009. I happened to get this on Walmart online. It was uh, around $30, I believe. Um, comes with a sender. This is the sender here. That sender bolts onto the head. The back of the sender rests flush against the head and that's how you get your temp. Why do you want a temperature gauge on an outboard motor? Well in my case I run the boat in salt water. When I'm rinsing the motor at the end of the day I run the motor in a bucket and want to get it to operating temperature so the thermostat's open so I get a proper flushing of all the inside passages. So with the temp gauge now I'll be able to tell when I'm getting up to full operating temperature then I know the thermostats have opened. Also when you're running on the open water it's nice to have a temp gauge because you can see if the temp is starting to creep upwards and uh, there could be an issue and you can deal with it before the warning horn goes off when typically at that point you're in an overheat mode. So that's what we're after and um, we're going to put this in today. The first thing we're going to do is run a sender wire from the motor up to the instrument panel and in my case it makes more sense to run this wire starting at the stern going forward so we're using a stiff piece of wire here to shove this red sender wire up through the wiring harness and into the back of the boat and from there we'll snake it through up to the front. Okay, the sender wire has been run. This is where the gauge is going to go. There was an existing unused hole here. This is a two inch gauge. Uh, the wiring is similar to many gauges. It's got a, a ground, an ignition wire, and then the sender wire terminal. And we're going to be using uh, a couple jumper wires to tap off existing gauges that I just made these up. So we'll tap off the, the light the ground and the um, ignition wire off the voltmeter gauge which is right below it here. So we're going to do that next. Just a quick note on the gauge now that it's installed. There are at least a couple other styles of gauge that they make in this two inch size for the cylinder uh, head temp and uh, this was just the one that was closest to my tack gauge right there. So there are a couple different styles. Now back to the uh, engine and we're going to put in the sender. Okay, now we're putting the sender in. Um, this button popped out on me. So be careful of this. It's a very weak friction fit. I'm going to pop it back in here. And it's just barely hanging on. So that could be the weak link of this. We're going to tighten it up and see how it does. Okay, we put that button back in. You can see our red sender wire uh, on the end of the sender. We used one of these smaller head bolts to uh, put the sender flat against the top of the head as a direction, say. Um, I looked at originally maybe putting a sender in this threaded hole that's in here. Um, there's another port in here. Temperature senders work off head temp not they don't actually protrude into the water jackets and measure the water temp like a car does on a temperature gauge so this here is the um, warning horn sender so I just opted for this this is looks like a great option easy to install this loosey-goosey button here is something we're really gonna have to keep an eye on I don't, that could be the weak link. Hope this video helps. Okay, we put the temp gauge in. Just did a full plane run for about 15 minutes. Temp gauge is reading about 100, which I think is low, but it's giving me a reference point. And that's all we're looking for is what, what's the temp gauge going to read at 
full operating temperature. Then if we get any variation where it starts to creep up, we'll know, you know that anything past 100 is take a look at things. Hope this helps.